Hello and welcome to the second and the last part of building Reactive Link Shortener. Today we are going to implement repository layer with Spring Data Redis and write a test for it using test containers. If you haven't seen the previous part, the link should pop up somewhere here. And if you did, enjoy the second part. Okay, so what's next? The next thing what we should do is to actually save the link into the database because what we have right now is just generating a shortened version, but we will not be able really to retrieve the original link by the short one. So we can have a link repository. And this is going to be an interface that will save a link object and return the saved version. This can work like that. So what would be the link? Link is a class that joins together the original link and the key. We can make it as a Lombok value object. And then in the link service, I have to add it as a constructor parameter. And then here in the link service, when we shorten it, we will call link repository save and then I create a new link and the first parameter is a original link and then there is a random key. Once it's saved, I will map it to the base URL result get key. And we just return it. So now we need to fix the unit test. I, IntelliJ automatically added this link repository property here. I will use mock class from Mokito to create a mock of link repository since we don't want to use the real object. And link repository works in a way that for every save method invocation, it returns the same object as its pass as a parameter. So we can just do a before method that runs before every test. And that's exactly this. So I can use Mokito when ring repository save. And if I pass here any, I can use a construction that is called answer. So I can do new answer. It answers with a mono off link. And as a return object, I will take the parameter that is passed here as any. I can do it in a way that I will just do a link, link, and then invocation on the mock. I take the arguments, and this is the first argument. Since Java has no idea if it's really this object, I have to cast it. And then I can just return mono just link. I can do it even a little bit shorter so that we can use lambdas. If I refactor it like that, IntelliJ automatically changes into a lambda expression, which is a little bit long, but still it's fine. If I run the test now, it should pass. And we can move on to the real Redis-based link repository implementation. I will create a new Redis link repository class that will be annotated with repository annotation. I cannot unfortunately use anything here like CRUD repository uh, that we know from Spring Data because Reactive Redis does not implement it. And before I implement the method, I want to start with a test. This is going to be an integration test, so I have to annotate it with run with Spring Runner and also Spring Boot Test. And the test method that I'm going to implement is going to be first that it returns the save link as I pass as a parameter. I will auto wire Redis link repository. And since this is a reactive interface, I have to use step verifier. And what we want to have here is some sample link. 
And then when I save it, I want to verify that the next emitted element is the same as link. And then I want to verify complete. The next test will check if we actually save it in the database. So I will create a new test method saves in Redis. And the content of the test will be very, very similar. It will be only different in a way that after we save, I want to check if the if we can retrieve the same element by finding by key. This find by ID method, of course, does not exist yet. So I will create it on the interface level, since we are going to use it anyway later. This returns a link. And in the Redis link repository, I will just create an empty implementation. And we still we expect that the next element will be also a link. Before we can actually implement this Redis link repository, we need a special bean from Spring Data Redis that it's called reactive Redis operations. I will create a new configuration class that I will call Redis configuration. And it will create one bean that is reactive Redis operations, where the key value is just string string. As a key in Redis, we will use the key from the link object. And as a value, it will be the original URL. And as a return object, it will be reactive string Redis template. It needs a reactive Redis connection factory as a constructor parameter. It's provided by Spring Data. So I can just inject it as a method parameter and refactor it a little bit. Now I can take this reactive Redis operations, go to Redis link repository and put it as a field. If I make it final, then I will have a constructor like this. And let's implement the safe method. So reactive Redis operations have a method called ops for value, where we can just say that for a particular key, we want to set a particular value. And in our case, for the generated key in the link object, we want to set the original link. In a similar way, we will implement another method that will be find by key. We also use ops for value, but instead of setting, we use get. We want to search by key. And then once we get the result, we want to map it to a link class where the first parameter is a result and the key is the key. So what will happen now if I run the test? Let's see. The test of course failed because there is no Docker running on my machine. So there are two ways we can approach it. The first, the easiest one would be just to start Redis in a Docker container. And now if I run these tests again, they should pass. But this means that every time I run the test, I have to make sure that Redis is running on my machine. Also on the continuous integration server, I have to have Redis running. So there is a better way to do it. And the better way is to use test containers. And even the higher abstraction over the test containers, which is called Playtica test containers. There are a couple of things I need to add to POM XML to make it work. So the first thing is that I add embedded Redis. And this already brings test containers. But Playtica also depends on Spring Cloud. Since I don't use Spring Cloud in this project yet, I have to add another section with dependencies management that will add Spring Cloud dependencies that will resolve all the versions for a Spring Cloud project. And then I need to add a Spring Cloud starter with a scope test because we use it only in tests. So Playtica works in a way that when I start 
application in test, it will also start Redis container, but I have to pass the port and the host name to my Spring Boot project. So I will create here a new resources directory that will have also application properties class that will be just used during tests. I need to mark it as test resources root. And I have to configure here the properties for Spring Data Redis. I just need to specify host, port, and password. And now if I run the Redis link repository test again, we will see something interesting in logs. So in the logs, we can see that test containers started Redis Docker container. And this is really cool because it means that every time we run anywhere our tests, it will just start Redis automatically. At this stage, we have the part of creating a link finished. So when there is a post request coming, we create a shortened version, we save it in the database. So it's now the time to implement the next part with it will be a get request for retrieving the original link or rather not retrieving, but re redirecting the user to the original link. Let's start with writing the test. It's always the better way. We want to have a test that verifies that our application redirects to original link. So I will make a get request to the URI that will be something like our shortened link. And we want to make sure that the status is permanent redirect. We also have to check if the header location matches the original link. Okay, so let's start implementing the actual method in the controller. There will be one get mapping that will have a key in a path variable and it will return a mono of response entity of an object. So it will be get link. I will need a new method on the link service like get original link by a key. And this method will return a mono of a link. We already have a repository method that lets us do it. So we will just find by key and that's it. If I go back to link controller, when the result is found, we want to map it to response entity with a status permanent redirect and a header location equal to original link. If the result is not found, we can do default if empty response entity not found. Let's now go back to the test. And here we want to mock the invocation of link service get original link as a key, we need to take the same value as we passed later on. And we want to return mono just of a new link that will have this as a original URL. And the key as the second parameter. So let's see if it passes. Okay, at this stage, we should have a fully working application. If I run it and execute curl command to post to HTTP localhost 8080 slash link with a content type application JSON and the body will be link. 
spring.io. It will return a shortened version of this link. When I click on it, it should redirect me to the actual website. One thing that I would like to improve is that I still had to have a Redis running on my local machine, explicitly started in terminal to be able to run application locally. And since we already use test containers for tests, could we also take it for running application locally? And the answer is yes, but there is a one trick. We have to create a new class and it has to be in the test directory. I will call this class the start application. This class will have a public static void main method exactly as our demo application class and it will actually even have pretty much the same content. The difference is that since it's running from the test directory, it will take the test class path that contains Playtica test container. So, so when I stop currently running application and run it through start application class, it will start Redis in Docker before our Spring Boot application starts. And now I can try, make sure that it's really working. So I can go back, make another call request. And yes, it works fine. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. And if you did, please click the like button down below and hopefully see you in the next video.